Francesco Cossiga, Francesco Cossiga, 1928-2010, was an Italian politician, member of the Christian Democracy. He served as the 42nd Prime Minister of Italy from 1979 to 1980 and the 8th President of Italy from 1985 to 1992. Cossiga is widely considered one of the most prominent and influential politicians of the so-called First Republic. He has been often described as a strongman and accused of being an iron minister who brutally repressed the public protests. Cossiga served also as minister for several times, notably during his stay as Italian Minister of the Interior, where he restructured the Italian police, civil protection and secrete services. He was in office at the time of the kidnapping and murder of Aldo Moro by Reg Brigades, and resigned as Minister of the Interior when Moro was found dead in 1978. Cossiga was Prime Minister when neo-fascist terrorists bombed Bologna Railway Station in 1980. He was also a professor of constitutional law at the University of Sassari. Francesco Cossiga was born in Sassari on July 26, 1928, by a Republican and anti-fascist middle bourgeois family. He was the second-degree cousin of Enrico and Giovanni Berlinguer. Although he was commonly called Cossiga, the original pronunciation of the surname is Cossiga. His surname in Sardinian and Sassarese means Corsica, likely pointing to the family's origin. At the age of 16, he graduated, in advance of three years, at the Classical Lyceum Domenico Alberto Atsuni. The following year he joined in the Christian Democracy, and three years later, at only 19 years old, he graduated in law and started a university career as Professor of Constitutional Law at the Faculty of Jurisprudence of the University of Sassari. During his period at the university he became a member of the Catholic Federation of University Students, FUCI becoming the association's leader for Sassari. After the 1958 general election Cossiga was elected in the Chamber of Deputies for the first time, representing the constituency of Cagliari Sassari. In February 1966 he became the youngest undersecretary of the Ministry of Defense, in the government of Aldo Moro. In this role he had to face the aftermath of Piano Solo, an envisaged plot for an Italian coup d'etat requested by then-President Antonio Saini, two years before. From November 1974 to February 1976 Cossiga was Minister of Public Administration in Moro's fourth government. On February 12, 1976, Cossiga was appointed Minister of the Interior, by Prime Minister Moro. During his term he restructured the Italian police, civil protection and secret services. Cossiga has been often described as a strong man and accused of being an iron minister, who brutally repressed the public protests. Moreover, during his tenure as interior minister he was often nicknamed Koiga, with the Schutzstaffel symbol. In 1977 the city of Bologna was the scene of violent street clashes. In particular, on March 11 the militant of the far-left organization Lo de Continua, Francesco Loruso, was killed by a gunshot to the back, probably fired by a policeman, when police dispersed protesters against a mass meeting of communion and liberation, which was being held that morning at the university. This event served as a detonator for a long series of clashes with security forces for two days, which affected the entire city of Bologna. Cossiga sent armored vehicles into the university area and other hot spots of the city to quell what he perceived as guerrilla warfare. Clashes with the police caused numerous casualties among people who got caught up in the riots, including uninvolved locals. No old leftist party, except the Youth Socialist Federation, led by local secretary Emilio Leonardo participated at the funeral of the student Lorusso, showing the dramatic split between the movement and the historical left parties. Turin was also the scene of bloody clashes and attacks. On October 1, 1977, after a procession had started with an attack on the headquarters of the Italian Social Movement, MSI, a group of militants of Lo de Continua reached a downtown bar, L'Angelo Azzurro, the Blue Angel. Frequented by young right-wing activists stopped they threw two Molotov cocktails, and Roberto Crescencio, a totally apolitical student, died of burns. The perpetrators of the murder were never identified. Lode Continua leader Silvio Viale called it a tragic accident. Another innocent victim of the riots of that year was Giorgiana Massi, who was killed in Rome by a gunshot during an event organized by the Radical Party to celebrate the third anniversary of the victory in the referendum on divorce. As the perpetrators of the murder remained unknown, the movement attributed the responsibility of the crime to police officers in plain clothes, which were immortalized at that time dressed in clothing of the style of young people of the movement.
Kasika was in office at the time of the kidnapping and murder of the Christian Democratic leader Aldo Moro by the Marxist-Leninist extreme left terrorist group Red Brigades. On the morning of March 16, 1978, the day on which the new cabinet led by Giulio Andreotti was supposed to have undergone a confidence vote in the Italian parliament, the car of Moro, former prime minister and then president of D.C., was assaulted by a group of Red Brigades terrorists in Via Fani in Rome. Firing automatic weapons, the terrorists killed Moro's bodyguards, two carabinieri in Moro's car and three policemen in the following car, and kidnapped him. Kasika formed immediately two crisis committees. The first one was a technical operational political committee, chaired by Kasiga himself and, in his absence, by Undersecretary Nicola Lettieri. Other members included the supreme commanders of the Italian police forces, of the Carabinieri, the Guardia di Finanza, the recently named directors of Sismi and SIST, respectively, Italy's military and civil intelligence services, the national secretary of CSIS, a secret information agency, the director of Usigos and the police prefect of Rome. The second one was an information committee, including members of CSIS, SIST, Sismi and SIOS, another military intelligence office. A third unofficial committee was created which never met officially called the Comitato di Esperti, Committee of Experts. Its existence was not disclosed until 1981, by Cossiga himself, in his interrogation by the Italian Parliament's Commission about the Moro affair. He omitted to reveal the decisions and the activities of the committee however. This committee included, Steve Pachenik, a psychologist of the anti-terrorism section of the U.S. State Department, and notable Italian criminologist. Pachenik later declared that there were numerous leaks about the discussions made at the committee, and accused Kosiga. However on May 9, 1978 Moro's body was found in the trunk of a Renault 4 in Via Citani after 55 days of imprisonment, during which Moro was submitted to a political trial by the so-called People's Court set up by the Brigate Rossa and the Italian government was asked for an exchange of prisoners. Despite the common interpretation, the car location in Via Citani was not halfway between the locations of the national offices of DC and of the Italian Communist Party, PCI. In Rome. After two days, Cossiga resigned as Minister of the Interior. According to Italian journalist Enrico Gialio, Cossiga, to justify his lack of action, accused the leaders of Gjeland of the Communist Party of knowing where Moro was detained. Cossiga was also accused by Moro himself, in his letters he wrote during his detention, saying that his blood will fall over him. One year after Moro's death and the subsequent Cossiga's resignation as Interior Minister, he was appointed Prime Minister of Italy. He led a government's coalition composed by Christian Democrats, Socialists, Democratic Socialists, Republicans, and Liberals. Kasika was head of the government during the Bologna Massacre, a terrorist bombing of the Bologna Central Station on the morning of August 2, 1980, which killed 85 people and wounded more than 200. The attack was carried out by the neo-fascist terrorist organization Nuclei Armati Revoluzionari, Armed Revolutionary Nuclei which always denied any involvement, other theories have been proposed, especially in correlation with the strategy of tension. Francesco Cossiga first assumed the explosion to have been caused by an accident, the explosion of an old boiler located in the basement of the station. Nevertheless, soon the evidence gathered on site of the explosion made it clear that the attack constituted an act of terrorism. Lunita the newspaper of the Communist Party on 3 August already attributed responsibility for the attack to neo-fascists. Later, in a special session to the Senate, Kasiga supported the theory that neo-fascists were behind the attack, unlike leftist terrorism, which strikes at the heart of the state through its representatives, black terrorism prefers the massacre because it promotes panic and impulsive reactions. Later, according to media reports in 2004, taken up again in 2007, Kasiga, in a letter addressed to Enzo Fragola, leader of the National Alliance section in the Mitrokin Committee, suggests a Palestinian involvement of George Habash's Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine and the separate group of Ilich Ramirez Sanchez, known as Carlos the Jackal. In addition, in 2008 Kosiga gave an interview to BBC in which it reaffirmed its belief that the massacre would not be attributable to black terrorism, but to an incident of Palestinian resistance groups operating in Italy. He declares also being convinced of the innocence of Francesca Mambro and Giuseppe Valerio Fioravanti, the two neo-fascist terrorists accused of the massacre. The PFLP has always denied responsibility. In October 1980, Cossiga resigned as prime minister after the rejection of the financial law by the Italian parliament.
fact, following the 1983 general election, Cossiga became a member of the Italian Senate. On 12 July, he was elected president of the Senate. In the 1985 presidential election, Cossiga was elected as president of Italy with 752 votes out of 977. His candidacy was endorsed by the Christian Democracy, but supported also by communists, socialists, social democrats, liberals and republicans. This was the first time an Italian presidential candidate had won the election on the first ballot, where a two-thirds majority is necessary. The Cossiga presidency was essentially divided into two phases related to the attitudes of the head of state. In the first five years, Cossiga played its role in a traditional way caring for the role of the Republican institutions under the Constitution, which makes the President of the Republic a kind of arbitrator in relations between the powers of the state. It was in his last two years as President that Cossiga began to express some unusual opinions regarding the Italian political system. He opined that the Italian parties, especially the Christian Democrats and the Communists had to take into account the deep changes brought about by the fall of the Berlin Wall and the end of the Cold War. According to him, DC and PCI would therefore have been seriously affected by this change, but Cossiga believed that political parties and the same institutions refused to recognize it. Thus, a period of conflict and political controversy began, often provocative and deliberately excessive, and with very strong media exposure. These statements, soon dubbed esternazioni, or matic blows, picanate, were considered by many to be inappropriate for a president, and often beyond his constitutional powers, also. His mental health was doubted and Cossiga had to declare I am the fake madman who speaks the truth. Cossiga suffered from bipolar disorder and depression in the last years of his life. Among the statements of the president there were also allegations of excessive politicization of the judiciary system, and the stigmatization of the fact that young magistrates, who just came into service, were immediately destined for the Sicilian prosecutor to carry out mafia proceedings. For his changed attitude. Cossiga received various criticisms by almost every party, with the exception of the Italian social movement, which stood beside him in defense of the Piccinate. He will, amongst other things, be considered one of the first cleansers of MSI, who recognized it as a constitutional and democratic force. Tension developed between Cossiga and Prime Minister Giulio Andreotti. This tension emerged when Andreotti revealed the existence of Gladio a stay-behind organization with the official aim of countering a possible Soviet invasion through sabotage and guerrilla warfare behind enemy lines. Cossiga acknowledged his involvement in the establishment of the organization. The Democratic Party of the Left, successor to the Communist Party, started the procedure of impeachment. Presidents of Italy can be impeached only for high treason against the state or for an attempt to overthrow the Constitution. Although he threatened to prevent the impeachment procedure by dissolving Parliament, the impeachment request was ultimately dismissed. Cossiga resigned two months before the end of his term, on April 25, 1992. In his last speech as president he stated to young people I want to say to love the fatherland, to honor the nation, to serve the republic, to believe in freedom and to believe in our country. According to the Italian constitution, after his resignation from the office of president, Cossiga became senator for life joining his predecessors in the upper house of parliament, with whom he also shared the title of President Emeritus of the Italian Republic. In February 1998, Cossiga created the Democratic Union for the Republic, UDR, a Christian democratic political party, declaring it to be politically central. The UDR was a crucial component of the majority that supported the Massimo D'Alema government in October 1998, after the fall of the Romano Prodi's government which lost a vote of confidence. Cossiga declared that his support for Dalama was intended to end the conventional exclusion of the former communist leaders from the premiership in Italy. In 1999 UDR was dissolved and Cossiga returned to his activities as a senator, with competences in the Military Affairs Commission. In May 2006 Cossiga gave his support to the formation of Prodi's second government. In the same month he brought in a bill that would allow the region of South Tyrol to hold a referendum where the local electorate could decide whether to remain within the Republic of Italy, take independence, or become part of Austria again. On November 27, 2006, he resigned from his position as a lifetime senator. His resignation was, however, rejected on January 31, 2007 by a vote of the Senate. In May 2008 Cossiga voted in favor of the government of Silvio Berlusconi.
Martin. Kasiga died on August 17, 2010 from respiratory problems at the Agostino Gemelli Polyclinic. After his death, four letters written by Kasiga were sent to the four highest authorities off the state in office at the time of his death. President of the Republic Giorgio Napolitano, President of the Senate Renato Schifani, President of the Chamber of Deputies Gianfranco Fini and Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi. The funerals took place in his hometown, Sassari, at the Church of San Giuseppe. Cosiga is buried in the public cemetery of Sassari, in the family tomb, not far from the one office predecessor as President of Italy, Antonio Sanyi. In 2007, Kasiga wrote, referring to the 2001 September 11th attacks, all democratic circles in America and of Europe, especially those of the Italian center-left, now know that the disastrous attack was planned and realized by the American CIA and Mossad with the help of the Zionist world, to place the blame on Arab countries and to persuade the Western powers to intervene in Iraq and Afghanistan. However, the previous year Kasiga had stated that he rejects theoretical conspiracies and that it seems soon likely that September 11th was the result of an American plot. In the same statement, Kasiga claimed that a videotape circulated by Osama bin Laden's al-Qaeda and containing threats against Silvio Berlusconi was produced in the studios off media set in Milan and forwarded to the Islamist Al Jazeera television network. The purpose of that videotape, which was actually an audio tape, was to raise a wave of solidarity to Berlusconi who was, at the time, facing political difficulties. In 2008, Francesco Cossica said that Mario Draghi was a craven moneyman. Cossica blamed the loss of Atavia Flight 870, a passenger jet that crashed in 1980 with the loss of all 81 people on board, on a missile fired from a French Navy aircraft. On January 23, 2013, Italy's top criminal court ruled that there was abundantly clear evidence that the flight was brought down by a missile. As President of the Republic, Cossiga was head, and also Knight Grand Cross with Grand Cordon, of the Order of Merit of the Italian Republic, from July 3, 1985 to April 28, 1992, Military Order of Italy. Order of the Star of Italian Solidarity, Order of Merit for Labor and Order of Vittorio Veneto and Grand Cross of Merit of the Italian Red Cross. He has also been given honors and awards by other countries. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.